Hello guys, Smart Polly here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will cover the basics of Blueprint, Unreal Engine 4's visual scripting system that is really easy to learn and can be used to create gameplay without writing a single line of code. I will show you how to utilize Blueprint to create a simple door that you can toggle open and close. Later on, I will also explain the basic Blueprint framework of Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm using Unreal Engine 4.25.3, and I've just created a simple third-person project using Blueprint and no starter content, and I just named it UE4 Basics. So if you've never used Blueprint before, or perhaps you're new to Blueprint, basically it's a complete visual scripting system in Unreal Engine where you can create gameplay functionality. You can use it to create something as simple as opening a door, turning on a light, or something more advanced such as an ability system, inventory system, and much more. There are many different types of Blueprint classes, so to first make a Blueprint, you just right click in your content browser, and you can see this create a basic asset, a Blueprint class. So go ahead and click on Blueprint. As you can see here, there are different Blueprint classes here. Uh, these are the most common ones. Uh, there's a lot more if you hit this little down arrow but we're just gonna focus on the common ones for now. So first we have an actor, uh, just a simple blueprint actor that you can drag into your scene. We have a pawn, which is an actor that can be possessed. And then we have the character, which is basically a type of pawn that has some more components. And then we have a player controller, which is used to control the character. All right, and then we have a game mode class, which holds all the information like the rules, uh, the scores, and more information about the game. Uh, then we have actor component and scene component, which I'll explain a little bit later. So we'll go ahead and create an actor for our door here. So we can go ahead and name this BP underscore door. Go ahead and double click it to open it. And we're just gonna dock it here at the top. So if you've never opened a blueprint before, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain the whole layout of this window. So on the left here, we have the components. This is where you have uh, different components that you can add to your blueprint actor. So as you can see here, we have audio, lights, skeletal mesh for your character, static mesh, basic shapes, cameras, collision boxes, and so on. And then up here at the top, we have the save the compile button and class settings uh, play. And then over on the right, we have the details. So this holds all the class defaults for the actor. Okay, so you can see here there's different settings like replication, uh, collision, and so on. And then in the center here, we have the viewport. So we have just normal viewport controls, just like in the normal Unreal Engine viewport. Then at the top here, you can see we have a construction script and an event graph. Uh, basically, this is where you do the actual blueprint scripting part, uh, where you can drag nodes together and connect them and link them together. Okay, over on the left, we have my blueprint. We have the event graph, which is what we have open. We have the events right here, uh, the construction script. And then we have the functions, so you can add new functions here. Uh, functions are basically collapsed uh, event graphs where you can add basically more scripting and blueprint in functions. Uh, that way you can keep your event graph clean. Okay, then we have variables. So you can store things like all the different variable types. You can store like health and mana and all that stuff in the variables. Uh, variables can basically allow you to hold certain information. So if we create a new variable here, you can see it creates a new variable. And over on the details panel here, you can see uh, the boot variable type. So if I click here, you can see the various different uh, variables that we have. We have Boolean, which is a true false. We have a byte, which is a bit number, integer, a float number, string, text, uh, vector, rotator, and so on. Basically, on the Unreal Engine docs, it gives a full rundown of all the different variables. Um, now, if you've programmed before or messed around with any sort of programming language, uh, you're probably already familiar with what variables are and what they do. 
as well as all the different types. And if you are new, as you go on, you'll learn more about variables and the different types, as well as how to create an array right here, a set or a map. So just very briefly, all the different variables. And again, we'll do some more hands-on with these and where you can utilize them. All right, so that's basically everything about the Blueprint Editor here. We're gonna go ahead and set up our Blueprint door. So go ahead and download the project file. It's just this simple static mesh door that I've created in Blender. And go ahead and download it, drag and drop it right into your content browser. You're gonna see this FBX import options. Uh, you can leave everything at the default settings and just click import. Okay. And so then we can go ahead and go back into our BP door here. And then we're going to go ahead and add two new components. So first we're going to add a static mesh. Okay, and then you can just rename this to door. Then we're going to add a box collision. And we're going to drag this back onto the scene, uh, default scene root. Attach it right there so that one or the other isn't attached and they're both in the default scene root. Okay, so for the door, you want to set the static mesh here and the details to static mesh door, the asset we just imported. And then we're going to go over into the viewport here. And you're going to see there's the door right here. Okay, so basically the components is what allows us to put uh, objects, static meshes inside of our viewport here. And then in the event graph is where we're going to do all the scripting for our door. So what we can go ahead and do is grab our uh, box collision. And we're going to go ahead and scale this. So you can click R to scale. And just drag it like so. Scale it up. And then we're going to hit W on the keyboard to transform. And then R again to scale like so. Okay, so we're just creating a simple collision box around the door that our player can run into and interact with the door. So go ahead and compile, save that. Then in the event graph, we're going to select the box collision. Scroll down in the details panel. We're going to add a event on component begin overlap. Then select the box again and add a on component end overlap. So basically, we're going to going to drag off of the event begin overlap and enable input. The player controller, we're going to drag off that and get player controller. All right, and then off of the player controller, we're going to drag off this and then disable input and hook that up to the end overlap. So basically what this is doing is when our player begins to overlap with this box collision, that means the input is enabled. So it means it can interact with the door and open it. And when they leave the box, then you disable input so they can't open the door. And then we're going to add interaction for the door. So right click here and add E key. So scroll all the way up until you see the E key right here. Okay, so when it's press and release, we're going to add some uh, logic here. Off the press, we're going to drag off here and type in flip flop. And I'll explain what this does here in a second. But off of the A, we can go ahead and create a timeline. Okay, and basically this timeline is going to allow us to uh, set the rotation of the door to give it a smooth open and close animation. So if you go ahead and double click the timeline, we're gonna see this timeline editor here. So you just go to add a float track. And then here we have basically an X and a Y. It's a very simple kind of graph. So we're gonna add a new point on the graph. To do that, you right click, add a key, and then right here, we're going to right click, add a key. So the first one, you can select it here, and the yellow means it's selected. You can see the value of that point. We're just going to set it to 0 on the X and 0 on the Y. Then right here, we're going to set this to 2 on the X and 90 on the Y. Okay, and as you can see, you can't really see it anymore, so you can click these two buttons, zoom to fit horizontal, zoom to fit vertical. We can also go ahead and control 
hold down control and click on both of these so you see both of them are selected right click and click auto this will give us a nice smooth transition between the two values and this will all be a little bit more clear here in a second so just go ahead and compile save that go back to your event graph then off of the update we're going to set relative rotation and then we're going to drag off the target and get the door and then off of the new track we're going to make rotator and then we'll go ahead and drag off the return value into the new rotator there okay and we actually need to plug this one in here so i just click alt and then left click to break the connection there then we'll go ahead and drag this into the z and then lastly we'll drag the flip-flop the b into the reverse okay so basically what this is doing is when we press e it's going to play this timeline which is going to output a float variable which is basically just a number um, it's going to start from zero and then go to 90 and that's going to feed into our rotation of our door so basically our door is going to go from close to open it's going to rotate 90 degrees so we can go ahead and go back into our example map right here and drag our bp door blueprint right into our scene so if we hit play we go up to the door, we press E. You're going to see it's going to open. You can press E again. And the door is going to close. So E to open. And then E again to close it. Again, what's happening is when we overlap the box right here, uh, basically it allows us to enable input, which then means we can press E on our keyboard. And if it's open or close, it'll flip flop between playing the timeline from the start which means it'll just open it up or playing it from reverse which means it'll close the door okay and it's basically feeding that float variable into the rotation of our door static mesh okay so just very basic hopefully you have understand um, how you can create uh, just very basic gameplay with blueprint and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to talk about some of the other classes here Okay, so basically I'm going to review the gameplay framework here of Unreal Engine. Um, this is here in the Unreal Engine docs. We're going to go ahead and click this gameplay framework quick reference. And so you can see here it's just going over the different uh, blueprint actors that I was mentioning before, like the pawn, character, the controller, player controller, HUD, camera, all that stuff, game mode, game state, and player state. Um, really, all the only ones that you really need to focus on are are the basic ones that you can create here uh, pawn character player controller and under here you have a nice little diagram here so basically the way it works is we have our game game mode and our game state really you're not going to be using the game state if you're doing single player uh, so for right now we'll just focus on the game mode so we have our player controller which is when you play the game this is what you're going to be able to control the player controller possesses a pawn that you can control and the player controller attached to that is a hud which is like simple ui we have you know your health bar all that stuff then you have inputs so the player controller can run around all that stuff and click on the menu and they also have a camera so just very simple relationship between the pawn uh, the player controller and the game and the game mode so in action we can go ahead and select our third person character here and if you go to on the right here edit third person blueprint it's going to go ahead and pull this up now another way you can get to this is you can just go into your content browser and search third person character blueprint right here and open that up so in the event graph this is what's going to first pull up uh, you can see all of our inputs here this is what allows us to control our character and in the viewport here you can see our sk mannequin skeletal mesh you can see there's a camera attached to it and a simple collision capsule so on the components here you can see they have a few different components We've got the mesh camera camera boom and the capsule so very basic character blueprint and the parent class of this is a character uh, so if you're wondering on how to create this blueprint from scratch you would just go into your content browser right click add a blueprint a character 
so that's pretty much it for the basics of Blueprint. Just a very quick introduction on how to use Blueprint, uh, what it does, what you can do with it, as well as all the different Blueprint classes. Again, if you want to learn some more about uh, the basic framework, I highly suggest reading over the gameplay framework in the Unreal Engine docs. So I'll just leave a link to this in the description below. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.